Hello, everybody. My guest today is Giles Palmer. He's the founder and CEO of a company called Brandwatch, a leading social intelligence company. Formerly of B Sky B, Giles started Brandwatch and since its launch in August 27, it has grown to become one of the world's leading social media analytics and listening companies. Giles, are you ready to take us to the top? Ready to go. Ready right. to go, Nathan. All right, good. Um, and, and, and correct me, by the way, if I'm wrong, your name, is it a hard G on the front or is Giles right? Uh, it's a hard G, Giles. Giles. It's an unusual name. Sorry well, about good. that. I didn't choose it. Don't apologize for your name. I just want to make sure I get it right. Giles. Okay, good. Giles Palmer. So tell us about Brandwatch. What's the company doing and how do you make money? What's the revenue model? It's a subscription business. It's a SaaS business. Uh, and it's basically a data business. So we uh, down we, we crawl about 80 million websites and have feeds from the social networks. Uh, we aggregate all of that and we allow brands to to kind of check out what the world is saying about them, their competition and so on. And it goes back, you know, five years. So it's a research tool and a real time insights kind of engine for brand managers primarily. So if you went in there and I plot, you know, wall, uh, 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 McDonald's against Wendy's, can you actually see in your trends when Wendy's hired that super witty social media marketer that just grills people on Twitter? Can you actually see the lift or the drop? Possibly. We, it, uh, you can certainly see any changes in the conversation of, of anybody mentioning Wendy's online and what they're talking about. So you can even, the, the system will even tell you when unusual activity starts. And an unusual activity could be uh, when a certain phrase gets mentioned close to a brand for the first time ever. Um, so there's this kind of this big, big kind of algorithmic engine behind the scenes watching for, for unusual activity and then it kind of tells you oh look this is a new thing that's happened today we, we haven't seen this before interesting and our and like and i got i got i i got a sick we call them signals uh we got a sig i got a signal today of uh, one of the companies in our space uh having made an acquisition within uh six or seven minutes of it hit going online because the system was just kind of kind of watching for 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 that kind of activity who was that uh falcon social guys and in copenhagen who they, they acquired, acquired a uh, they're quite another local lo- local company. Uh, I can't actually remember the name of it because uh, I hadn't heard of it. But, I was going to um, say, do you know enough about the deal to know if it was a good buy or a bad buy for them? It, it, look, it looks like a sensible buy. Yeah. Um, it's a small buy, but uh, it, it looks sensible to me. Yeah, Interesting. So so give me a general sense of customer size. I mean, are these folks paying 100 bucks per month or a grand or 10 grand per month? What's general ACV? Uh, annual contract value is about... Thirty thousand dollars. Okay, average. so twenty five hundred a month so, on average. Yeah, so it's 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 enterprise grade. It's not cross enterprise. Um, you know, those systems tend to be more and more expensive. But it's it's a high end professional tool. Like it's not an it's it's it's, it's not Hootsuite. No, it's 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 like it's like a BMW, not not a not a whatever Mini Metro or Mini Monster, yeah. whatever. When did you launch the company? What was your one? August. Uh, 2007. So, so let me ask you a question. There was a, I would say the last big pop of MA activity in this space was 2012 when you had Buddy Media going right. out, Vitru, Wildfire, all these guys. You, I'm sure. Radiant six. Yes, I'm sure you had offers. You chose not to sell. Why? We had a lot, we had a lot of approaches. We had uh, one kind of pseudo offer. Um, we didn't like an it, LOI it in, or no? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, we 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 decided. Um, I guess we thought we were in in a kind of a up and to the right phase, and and we didn't think that the the deal that was being offered to us was uh, was representing that strongly enough. And also, we were kind of like you know we we didn't do this to sell. We didn't we didn't start it to just sell it. We started it to build a company, and we didn't feel like our job had. It had even been half done at that point. I mean, and, and and actually, if you look at those acquisitions, none of them really have gone on to meet to be meaningful. Oh gosh, no! There, I mean, Wildfire shut down. Who who even knows where Buddy Media is? And that you know, I mean, in Salesforce, right? Who knows? Vitru, who knows where they are? Involver, where where are they? I mean, they, mostly they got shut down. Yeah. So it, it and that would indicate to me that they were bought prematurely. You know, they weren't mature businesses. They hadn't figured out what, why they existed and what they were trying to solve for. Um, and I don't think we ha- totally had at that point either. So if we'd sold, it would have been a kind of, oh, look, somebody's come along with a big amount of money. Here's, here's. And, and actually, one of the reasons why we're still around and we're doing pretty well is because there's a bit, you know, there's an honesty in, 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 in what we're trying to do. We're not, we're not trying to 
build and sell. We're trying to build a great company. And, and I don't think that we were ready to, to, to sell it at that point. So what have you scaled to today in terms of total customers using you? Uh, just under 1500, 1,500. Okay. Um, you know, this year we'll do more than $60 million in revenue and there's 420 staff in the business. So, and it's profitable. And you, so, so we've got it to a good, a good spot. Are you, so where's growth at? So you said you're going to, you're, you will over the past 12 months, you did 60 million in ARR or that's what you will do? Uh, last year's record recognized revenue is around 50. So this year will be, it'll be above, you know, well above 60. Okay. And um, take, take me just so we can get a growth rate. Take me back 13 months ago, December, 2016. What was your run right then? I can't remember, but last, last year we, it, we, we, you know, we grew it healthily. It wasn't 40, 50%, but it, it wasn't it's like 10, 30, 15, it was like, it know? was like 30 percent ish, right? It's around there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you, if, if you did, fi- you know, if you ended the year at a 50 million, or you're going to do, or you're on a 60 million run rate today, right? You, you, you were somewhere caught in the, in the 48, 49 million run rate December 16. Something like that. I haven't got the data in front of me. That's but, okay. But, you know, it gives you, you a sense of the scale. I'm going to really bit. love you if you tell me you're bootstrapped, but I have a feeling you're going to break my heart. Yeah, I know. Sorry about that. How much have you I raised? Say, say, we've raised 50 million bucks. Um, five, five zero, zero. So. yeah. Yeah, not all of that's gone into the company, but the majority of it has. How um, much of it went to secondary versus operating? Um, I mean, f- four fifths of it went to to operating. Something. Oh, good. Something like oh, that. okay, that's healthy. Yeah, yeah that's healthy. Uh, I mean, the the reason why uh, we're not totally bootstrapped is isn't because we've scaled sales and uh, and all that kind of stuff and been super aggressive. It's because we had to build the back end way ahead of actually being able to monetize it. And that's an expensive exercise. That's hardware, software, and data. So, you know, it's it's a big, de- we've got something like a thousand servers that sit behind the live application. I mean, we could put it on the cloud. It doesn't, you know, either way, it's, gonna, it's an expensive machine to run because it's a massive data processing storage um, game that, that, that we're in. Well, it's so, a nice moat for you now, now that you're at scale. It's hard to well, compete. Exactly. It is. That's true enough. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Tell me about churn. That's obviously critical in this kind of business. Mm-hmm. Churn is, yeah, it's, and it's, it's the, um, as the business gets bigger, it's, it's an absolutely killer thing that you just have to get under control. I mean, we're not one of those businesses, sadly, that, that, that get, that, that signs on for like a dollar's worth of revenue and, in five years, uh, that that's two dollars, sort of thing. On a, on average, taking account of churn and so on, I you know I I I'm envious of of companies like Netsuite and and I guess Salesforce that just end up having this kind of viral effect across once they get it once they get a a customer. Uh, we have to work very hard for retention. We have to make our product incredibly sticky. We have to onboard our customers in a really smart way such that they're successful. We have to um, keep innovating like crazy to make sure that our product is something that they're going to continue to choose. In some ways, it makes us fitter as an organization, but it's also um, you know, a huge challenge um, to scale a business because you know if you've got 1% per month churn- Is that um, what you're at right now? Yeah, not quite, but okay. there or thereabouts. In terms of uh, revenue or logos, either it's very similar. Got it. um, uh, the, the you know that's a lot of revenue to replace. Now, obviously, we've got upsell, so that's gross churn. So upsell and and increasing your footprint within existing accounts that that's going to reduce that on a net basis. What is your but, net? Uh, <laughs> um, it varies, but we don't we don't disclose that. But, but um, are you over are you over a hundred in terms of net revenue retention annually? There or thereabouts. Okay. It, it, it varies depending on the cycle. Okay. Um, but but uh, but uh, my job is to is to think about you know how do we bring out new products that uh, our existing customer base would like to would like to use or or like last year we acquired a company called BuzzSumo and although it's not really aimed at the same sort of market space as our core product that is something that our core, that our customers. Um, are actually, you know, uh, taking as well. So, so there's more. By the way, that pro- move, that move by you really confused me. Uh, and what confused me even more now when you tell me what your ARPU is, because I see Buzzsumo as like a growth hacker, college student in their basement trying to hack their way into some extra SEO value, not a major brand that's, you know, paying your kind of money. I mean, so I don't like, what was the reasoning in your head behind that acquisition? So BuzzSumo have uh, 3,500 customers. Um, they have a lot of uh, 
blue chips using the, really? the software, but like on a credit card, right? Like a hundred bucks a month kind of thing. Yeah, up to you know that their average is about one hundred and thirty bucks a month. Okay. So, um, so, so they have they have a lot. They they have a. It's the best product on the market for content analysis. So, so you know there isn't a better one, even if you pay ten times more. So, so they get a lot of people using it. But the reason why we bought Buzzsumo, there's 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 three or four reasons. Number one, it's just a brilliant product, and it's very rare that brilliant products that have enormously loyal user user bases. Um, come to market without being incredibly expensive. Um, and so brilliant product, amazing team. Um, and, th- and then two other core reasons. Number one is that they've got a data set with the, you know, the amount of uh, the shared data, content shared data that is almost unique. It's just an extremely valuable aggregated data set. And we can use that within our existing Why product. has no one replicated it? Is, is there really hardcore it's, tech? It, yeah, and it's, it's super hard to do you know, at scale. Getting billions of bits of content and getting the accurate share data on those bits of content up to date on an ongoing basis. You try doing that. There, there's no feed. There's no Twitter feed of shares. There's no Facebook feed of shares uh, that you can just like t- tap into. You've got to figure out how to do it. It's really interesting tech. Interesting. Um, and and then and then I've always wanted to have a a self serve product uh, or a suite of products that are self serve. And because we're you know, high price, we have salespeople talking to prospects and so on and so forth. And all of the um, engineering effort and the product development uh, within Brandwatch goes to serving that, you know, those kinds of people, because that's, those are our customers. And that's what, that's what we're focusing on. Um, so there, it, there never came a point where I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's launch a self-service version of Brandwatch. That just never happened. Yeah. And it wasn't ever likely to happen. So, uh, so, I, so I bought a company, we bought a company to, go in at that low level, we're going to keep that brand and we're going to launch some other products that are basically self-serve, which can maybe borrow off the same off our infrastructure and leverage some of the stuff that we've built uh, internally. So, so it's a way of like, a, addressing a, low, a different market segment with a, a very efficient go-to-market model, great team, great product, great Amazing brand. mousetrap. Exactly. Yeah, much better mousetrap than anything else out there. So 3,000 folks when you bought it at 150 bucks a month, I mean, what, they were doing 450 grand a month, something like that? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, about that. That's way bigger, by the way, than I would have ever thought. Yeah, and they've got 400,000 freemium users. So they've got this huge database of freemium users as well. It's a free list for you. Amazing. That's great. So what? um, I don't know if it's enough removed now where you can share more of the details here, but it's valuable. Um, How do you value a company like that? There's obviously strategic reasons, but I mean, do you pay a 4X multiple, 5X, 1X? How do you value it? Uh, well, it depends. Valuing companies is an art form in of itself. Give me in your head though. Price. Um, like any, anything, like if you're paying five X, five X revenues for a company, it's got to be a really, really good company. Um, uh, I would, I think Buzzsumo is a really, really good company. Yeah. Um, did we pay five X? No, not quite, but you know, it's, it, it, it it's, you were North it, of three X. I'm not saying, but okay. it was, it was a good, it was a, the, the founders of Buzzsumo did great. Um, it was a cash, almost exclusively cash deal. Um, th- they're in it for the long term as well. For them, it was like, well, why would they sell such a successful company? Um, and the answer to that is, well, in order for them to get to the next level, then they would need to build sales forces and, and build a structure and professionalize the whole organization. But Sumo was, was, didn't even have an office. Let me, ask from- the, let me ask this question differently. Did you lock up an LOI with Steve before you went out and said, we want to raise $25 million? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't raise. We paid off balance sheet. Well, what, what I'm trying to get at is, was the majority of that fundraise specifically for the BuzzSumo acquisition? Oh, no, no, no. No, it wasn't. It wasn't? No. Okay. So the, the LOI to Steve came after. It wasn't, it wasn't like you lined up the LOI and then said, we got to go raise the capital to do the acquisition. Right. To be honest, I, that, that's probably a smarter way around of doing it. But uh, <laughs> no, we, we didn't do it that way around. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, no, quite, I mean, it's quite hard to get all that, all those ducks in a row, right? It is. It definitely is. I mean, yeah, no, it is. That, it's amazing. I mean, that's a, I didn't realize it was that big. I mean, 450 a month times, you know, call it 10 or 12 months. I mean, you're putting four or five, six million bucks in ARR. And if you do think they're a best, best, best company and pay 5X, I mean, that's a significant amount of your cash, 20, 30 million, at least from the last raise out the door. Now, you're profitable today, you said, right? Yeah. And how much total have you raised? Uh, 55. 50, 55. So, so how are you able to be, uh, I mean, this is going to sound a little bit weird, but how can you raise that much capital and be profitable unless you just let all of it sit in the bank and do nothing? 
Oh, so, I mean, that capital was raised over four different rounds. Um, so the last round, which we did in uh, end of 15, uh, just over two years ago, um, we we didn't we ended up not not needing anywhere near as much of that round as we thought we would. Got it. So you had way longer we runway were, than we, you thought. Yeah, we we were you know actually pretty close to profitability at that point. As it turns out, we we were going to be burning more, but uh, I'm I, I can't. I, our CFO is a pretty prudent dude. Yeah, um, that's a good thing. So yeah, we were we we were sensible with it. So that was two years really ago. That, a friend of mine said, a friend of mine said to me the other day, the, the first thing you should do when you raise a big round is is make loads of cuts. I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Sounds but, right uh, signal. But we, 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 were sen- we were sensible with it. Yeah, that's good. I mean, so that was two years ago. Right now, you're, you're, either, you're either raising additional capital or you're in talks to be acquired. Which one is it? It's neither, actually. Come on. Um, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> we're not raising. But, um, the, it, there is an opportunity, and everybody knows it in our space, uh, to, to rationalize the market a little bit and and – and have a have you know a bit of a consolidation uh, in and around these kind of social tools. You saw a mini, uh, mini version of that in 2012. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, it, it's not clear which entities are going to be the ones to kind of um, create this. Sprinkler have kind of done it a little bit by making lots of small acquisitions. Um, but there are some significant companies, a bit like us, um, some bigger, many many smaller. Um, Who've, who've got duplication of GNA, duplication of data storage, duplication of all sorts of stuff without giving too much benefit to the customer in general. So if you if you take six or seven of these competitors and turn them into one or two, then you've got one or two very, very valuable businesses. Even a company, um, I mean, look, even a company like Ryan at, at Holmes at Hootsuite, I mean, if he's looking to deploy capital in a smart way and his idea is how do we increase ARPU, right, across our current customer base, which they have a huge base, they bring on a tool like yours and, and you know, add an upsell. That, that kind of thing, absolutely. I yeah. mean, you know, they're 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 more. I mean, they're going enterprise, that's for sure. But historically, they've been more SMB. That's right. That's right. Interesting stuff. Okay, cool. Last few economics questions before we wrap up with the famous five. CAC. What are you spending right now to acquire new customers? Uh, tens of thousands. Annoyingly. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, our CAC payback. We want to get our CAC payback on a margin basis below 15 months okay. and we're there or thereabouts. Right when you now. say on a margin we're basis, you take ACV, right? And then you multiply times 85% gross margin. So call it 30 grand times 0.85. It's like 25 grand. And so you're spending about 28, 29 grand to acquire them and you get that back in 15 months. Exactly. Interesting. Um, and where are you spending that money typically? Is that mostly a sales team or is that paid ads? Mark, we don't do enough paid ads. I don't think actually, I think that's an opportunity. Marketing, we've got a big marketing team. How many of the 420? Uh, 30, 32. It's pretty healthy. That includes, in, that includes in-house design. We've got an in-house design team of like seven or eight. Um, uh, so probably 25, 24 marketers and eight, eight kind of graphic uh, creative design guys. Interesting. Um, it's how we've built the, the brand. We get 15,000 uniques to our website every day and, and over 100 demo requests. That, that, that's because we've taken a long-term view with our, with our marketing and our, and our kind of content, um, our content strategy. And Giles, so, what do you assume, uh, like on these folks, lifetime value can really lie to you, uh, especially if you just multiply, right? What do you assume yeah. a minimum LTV is? They're definitely worth X amount. Um. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's like, we would look at a, a, a five years as a, uh, as an average tenure, but it's increasing because the company is growing. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, hopefully we can get that to 10, you know, five to 10 years is, is the, is the play over the next five years. Well, even at, even at five years or 60 months, right. I mean, you, you've got, I mean, if I do the math on that, what is that? Thirty grand a year. That's assuming no expansion revenue year over year, which I'm sure you have. But thirty times six. I mean, that's 180 grand minimum, right? Lifetime value, which isn't bad. That's good. You know? But as you scale the business, you want to you want to keep pushing that out, and then and then uh, the growth rates don't slow down. Yep. Interesting. All right, let's wrap up here uh, with the famous five. Number one, what's the last business book you read? Oh, the last one. I thought it was a favorite one. The last one is. Um, uh, is Nassim Taleb's book, um, uh, Anti-Fragile. Anti-Fragile. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying currently? 
Not really. I don't. I should do that. I, I mean, I admire CEOs. I don't tend to study them. I don't know how to. Who do you I mean, admire? I like. I mean, I, 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 I think Larry Page has done an astonishing job at Google. I mean, you have to admire the, the, all the, the CEOs of the super famous companies. But if I had to pick one, I'd pick him just because I love his. He's more understated than than the, the than the other guys, and yep. I, I like that. Number three. Uh, what's a, besides your own? What's your favorite online tool for building the business? Um, Google Docs. <laughs> and number four, uh, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? I get about eight. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay, and what's your situation? Yeah. Married, single? You have kids? Uh, have kids, divorced, but with 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 a, with a partner. Okay, so, so not married, but two two, yeah. two two kids. And how old are you, Giles? Uh, I'm forty eight. Forty eight. Last question: What do you wish your twenty year old self knew? Uh, move to San Francisco. That's what I would say. <laughs> There you guys have it from Giles. I, I, look, I love, first off, he resisted the urges in 2012 to sell. He founded the company 2007. Really hard to stay disciplined in those early years when so much capital has to go into just building the engine to even make this thing run to get your first dollar in sales. Usually the pre-sales playbook is a good one to start. It's hard for him to do that, but he did it. Now 420 people full-time. Again, Brandwatch helping enterprise brands paying on average 30 grand in ACV, about 1,500 of them right now, helping them monitor their themselves and competitors in their market space across uh, online sources, especially social, growing about 30% year over year up from about 40 million run rate in December 2016 up to you know over 50 million today, 12% or less than 12% annual gross revenue churn, about 100% annual net revenue churn, obviously retention, sorry, that varies. 28 grand CAC, 150 grand minimum LTV payback around 15 months. Giles, thank you for taking us to the top.